Hello and welcome to a new series of mine, Kerbal Replication Tutorials. This is going to be a series of videos to teach you how to replicate real world aircraft and spacecraft in Kerbal Space Program. This time we are going to be building the Douglas DC-8. So, well this is a big and complex plane in real life, in KSP it should be rather trivial and the main goal for this build is to teach how to select what parts to use and also using the tools that we have such as offset and rotate so let's head into the space plane hangar now a good first step is to always try and find a blueprint or layout of the craft you're trying to build such as this. The bigger the better really so you can sort of zoom in and get a good idea of what is going on here. So here we are in the VAB. Now first off we want to choose a cockpit. Obviously being such a big plane we want a big cockpit. Drain all the modern propellant out of it because we don't need that. And stick on the nose cone because aerodynamics. Now, because this is so big, we're gonna wanna have to we're gonna have to pick up the cockpit, move it to the front of the hangar. Give ourselves plenty of room to build out. Now looking at our blueprints, we see that if we take this to be the back of the cockpit then this would be about the size of one Mark III crew tank. Now they are quite heavy. This is fine one here we are. 6.5 tons each. Whereas this large cargo bay is still 6 tons but it's about 3 times as long. So what we do is we put in one crew tank and then we just build out the rest of the fuselage in cargo bays. And this is another good lesson. If you can cut corners, do it. There might be some people out there who want to make them completely accurate. In which case, go for it. If you can make such a design work, more power to you. So, see it's quite long for how big it is. So, hmm, let's just see how one more big cargo bay looks. Now, it's looking good, but it's a bit too long. So we'll just use a half length, because as we can see, tail starts coming up quite soon. So I'll finish building out the fuselage and we'll reconvene in a moment. So we've finished building the fuselage. Note I've drained out all the fuel from these parts to keep it as light as possible. Now we'll move on to building the tail. So you can see it's got a nice high fin that kicks out a bit at the front. Now, in the new version of KSP, it just so happens that we have a nice big tail. I'm going to set that to only control your. Now to get that kick out at the bottom, we'll use a wing strike. Turn it around and bury it in there look pretty good. Now, these horizontal stabilizers, they're going to require a bit more ingenuity. Unless we can find a way to do it a bit more easily. I think these swept wings will do just nicely. Okay, so we've got a problem here. This is about a 45 degree sweep. 
this is only about 30, if that. So, what do we do? Well, we've got these four awesome things up here called Out of the Gizmos. We've currently been using the first one, Place. If we hit 3 on our keyboard, we get Rotate. Which allows us to swing these around whichever way we might desire. So we want to keep those flat, but pull them around a bit. Okay, so that's too much and that's too little. So we hit C, and if that will just go away, thank you. No. Oh boy. There we go. So, we've turned off angle snap, so now we can move it nice and freely about there, I think. But we have another problem. They're mounted a bit higher on the fuselage than what we currently have them, and a bit further back. So we just hit 2 to get offset. And we use these three little nodes to drag them around, and we'll bury it back in there a bit too. So that's the stabilizer itself. Now let's find, here we are, the L15. And keep angle snap off. This is a beautiful little part because it should fit just nicely in here with the swept wing. Might have used offset to get them lined up. Now that's the beauty of these gizmos. You can use them to tweak and change whatever you might want. Yeah. Now it's a tailplane finished. It may not look quite as impressive as what is on the real plane, but for KSP. And the way it handles aerodynamics, this should work just fine. Now let's move on to the wing root, which is this bit here. Now we won't be able to get quite as intricate a pattern as that, but we can do our best. So, by the looks of our blueprints, the wing root is about here. So what we're going to do is grab an FLT800 double length tank and just stick it here. Now of course that's not what the wing root looks like, so we'll just use offset again. Uh oh. This is a bit of a problem with these cargo bays. They don't like things offsetting on them. So as you can see if I try to bury this in here it just doesn't want to go any further past the surface. So we'll get rid of those for now. But there's a neat little workaround using the cubic octagonal strut. So if we just slap that on there, and then put the tank on that instead of the cargo bay, well yeah, first off it gets a bit wonky. Let's see if we can sort that out. Angle snap? No. Nope. What if we put it here so it's out nice and straight? Okay, we can work with that. So, when offsetting multiple parts in a chain like this, you want to try and get as close as you can using the root part. So, it's as far as we can go with the strut. Now we'll bring it in a little bit more. And of course empty the fuel. Now coming back to aerodynamics, we start making this thing a bit more aerodynamic by adding in some nose cones. Now we could use that same one on the back, but it's not quite the same shape. So to give it a bit more character, let's try using this. That's looking nice. Now let's, let's see, rotating, ah yeah that's even better, so it's sort of sharp there and it bleeds off towards the back. 
Now, the wings are pretty easy in the new update. Let's come over to page two. And we've got the Fat 455 airplane main wing. Turn on angle snap, flip it around the right way. And there we are. Uh oh. Seems like these wings are a little small. Hmm. I did not foresee this. But that's part of a learning experience. Now we don't as yet have any extensions for these wings. At least on the root. No, we cannot use that part. Could we use a swept wing? And this is really a big part of the uh, build process, is running into adversity and coming up with ways to get around it. So this wing piece here should give us a bit more length. Now if we go to offset mode and hit F, it'll switch to absolute, which means we can just offset this in relation to the part itself. Keep things nice and accurate. Now it still doesn't look quite as big and impressive as the real thing, but we can deal. And bury those wings in a bit. Now, it appears that the real DC-8 has a bit of dihedral. The wings are swept up a bit. So, what do we do? Well, we're just coming to offset to the root itself. Grab here, bring your mouse all the way to the corner so you can get as much resolution as you can. Okay, now that's way too much. Just a touch of dihedral. And what this does is it makes it more stable because you can think of it like the hull of a boat. Sort of coming in like this and if it rocks from side to side it wants to right itself in the air. The opposite of course is anhedral where the tips are angled down and that's what you see on some fighter jets. So this is looking good. Let's just check our center of mass versus center of lift. Okay. This is a bit of a problem. But we should be able to sort it out. One trick could be there we are. Sort of angle the main wing up a bit. And let's see if we can tweak the tail plane to give us. Yep, we can. Just by tweaking this tail plane's angle a bit, we can bring the center of lift much closer. And we can bring the center of mass back later on by using these tanks back here as trim. So I'm going to skip ahead here and add in things like the uh, control surfaces and the landing gear, and then we'll move on to the engines. Alright, so we've got gear and flaps, spoilers, and ailerons. Now, just like a real plane, the outer ones only control roll. These ones are just here for basically for show. And then these two inboard ones I've set up as flaps. So once they're deployed, they come down and increase lift as well as drag. This allows us to fly slower for takeoff and landing. Also, I've got some air brakes here to keep us on the runway once we've touched down, which is generally a good thing. 
Now, looking at the designs, we've got four high bypass turbofan engines mounted on pylons under the wing. And the way we do these in KSP is real simple and really awesome. In the new update, they gave us these engine nacelles. Well, really, they're uh, retextured parts that we had already, but now got this nice pylon here. Now we put on a circular intake on the front and come over to engines and we put on the basic turbojet. Now, commercial jets do not have gimbaled engines, so we'll just lock those and they're facing down. I don't know how that's going to affect us. But we'll leave it like that for now. So that's the inboard engines. Now they're a bit too close in. So we could pick them up and drag them around. Or we could just offset them. So push back. That's about where they need to be. And now we hold Alt and click duplicate the engine, or really any part, stick it on the wing. Again, not quite where it needs to be. Although it is about in the middle of the wing, so being that these wings are a bit smaller than they ought to be, let's move this one back in a bit. four engines and because we're not really going to be flying anywhere too far just yet we'll empty out a bit of fuel from here 20 units of fuel each just to keep the weight down a little bit now let's recheck our center of lift and mass now I have put in some ballast in the tail here not a great deal and we've still got a thrust to weight ratio of greater than one, so should have plenty of thrust to get us off the ground. Now just a couple more things. It's basically done now and ready to go flying. Except we don't really have much in the way of seeing where we're going equipment. So we'll add in some landing lights, just using the uh, standard spotlight. And as I said before, offset and rotate will save your life when you're building both replications and just normal craft. If you haven't used these yet, I strongly suggest you use them get to know them and love them. Okay, this is pretty much done. All that's left to do is name it. The... No, it's not de Havilland. What am I doing? It is a Douglas DC-8. Save that, and let's launch! Love the jazzy music in this game. Now I've got Flight Engineer, so that's just going to be able to tell me sort of like how long I've got left in my fuel and thrust to weight and things like that. Now don't be alarmed that your liquid fuel is just a sliver. That's because we've got all this tankage here that we're not actually using. So we'll hit the brakes just for now. And we see our air brakes come up. Now we hit V 
to switch the chase cam and because I'm on a joystick let's test our ailerons elevators rudders that's all good fire up engines turn on SAS full throttle now for playing with low slung engines like this they're going to want to try and torque the plane up so they're going to want to pitch up like this so to counteract that what we do is on launch we hold nose forward so that's W on the keyboard or push forward on the joystick to keep our nose down until we've got enough speed for our horizontal stabilizer to keep us level so now we spool up the full thrust brakes off and that's what I was talking about but now that we've got a bit of speed over our elevator we can keep our nose down whoa okay something's going on here ah yeah so air brakes have another little thing that they can do they can control the pitch in your we don't want them to do that so we'll just go like that now this is a, this is a commercial jet after all so we don't need anywhere near one to one thrust to weight so we'll throttle back a bit and now that we're flying Roll rate and response is pretty respectable. Let's see how it flies computers off. Feeling nice. Get a bit of rudder in the turn. Keep it coordinated. Now, you notice on takeoff that in conjunction with the uh, air brakes going nuts, now main wing was really wobbly. Let's go back to the hangar and see if we can fix that. Okay, first things first. We only want these air brakes being just that air brakes. If you've ever flown on a uh, commercial jet before and been lucky enough to get a window looking out over the wing, you may have noticed that as they roll, they've got spoilers along the wings about here that do come up to help them make those maneuvers but we don't want to do that in Kerbal Space Program now about that wing wobble if you remember we stuck these wing roots on with this little strut here and the main wing is connected to these these roots so, all the forces acting on these wings is coming through this tiny little part here. So, to fix that, we use struts. Again, alt click duplicates it. Don't have to keep diving back into the parts menu to get them back. So, a few up there. And I think we'll stick a couple on the wing, it's wing itself. Just a few. Now about that engine torque. Let's try rotating them up a few degrees. Not terribly much. But this should help get the uh, center of thrust a little closer to the center of mass. So ordinarily we'd want this going straight through the middle of this. That would mean no thrust torque. Now if we add fuel in here, it'll bring it down a bit. And yeah, let's just bring it to the center of lift. Not terribly bad. 
So, you see, there are lots of things that you can do to try and iron out problems you might be having. If it's wobbling, that's straps. If it's talking, you might want to see what your engines are doing in relation to your mass. And, just like we did here, you can add and remove fuel, oxidizer, whatever it is. Another thing is to use girders like this to add mass to planes that may not have conveniently placed tanks. If you look at my DeviantArt page, the uh, I've got a few planes there that have that sort of thing. Namely the uh, Prowler, one of the newer ones, has a few girders in the tail. But we're not here talking about Prowlers, we're talking about DC-8s. So let's see how it flies with these tweaks. This is shaping up to be one of my longer videos. So same procedure. Brakes on. Switch to the chase cam. SAS. Engine's on. And fire them up. And this is a similar procedure to what real commercial jets do. Once they're out on the runway, they'll lock the brakes, spool up the engines to full power, or at least take off power, before they start rolling. Alright, hold nose forward as we pick up speed. Yeah, so it's fixed it a bit. No longer scraping our tail along the runway. Tweak a rudder just to keep us straight. Now we can relax the pitch. And she just about flies herself off the runway. Now we can pull the gear up. And make a nice leisurely right hand turn. And there you have it. So, today we've learnt to cheat with parts. If you can get a similar look with lighter parts, go for the lighter parts. We've also learnt about using the offset and rotate tools. It is very rare to build a replication craft and not use those tools. And once you get good with them, you can make some really intricate designs that may not be immediately obvious to be possible. If you look at my A10 design, the vertical stabilizer, or stabilizers, it's got two of them, they are made entirely out of control surfaces. Ooh, SES is having a bit of trouble with the roll. That's another thing that we can tweak. So if we get this thing flying straight and level-ish. So we've currently got this, these outboard surfaces controlling our roll. Now that creates a lot of torque. And it's very sensitive. But if we switch to these inboard ones, just make sure they're both, yep, both on it. Now if we make a roll, much easier to control and maintain a uh, at least a half decent roll rate. And again, pull back the throttle a bit. Don't want to overspeed this. And let's hit you to turn on our landing lights. There you have it. Everything you need to know for basic replications. And especially with uh, 1.0's new wings, commercial jets like this 
do tend to be fairly easy. There are some that might be a bit more intricate, but the key to a good replication is experimentation and really just figuring out what might work and trying it out. So next time we'll go over some more complex techniques. Until then, see you later.